A no commentary version of this run can be found in the pinned comment in the comments section below. This video is intended as a game walkthrough. It is not a speedrun. All strategies in this video were made for efficiency and success rate. Please watch the entire video and listen carefully to the commentary before trying any of these strategies for yourself. Hello everyone, this is a no damage playthrough of Signalis on survival difficulty. Start by turning the tech speed to instant. I'll explain why later. Automatic reloading on. And for some reason, whenever you play on PC, the refresh rate just shifts back to 23 for no goddamn reason at all. We'll also shift that screen shake down, because it's super annoying. Definitely want to turn on quick radio. And if you're playing on controller, I recommend setting the controls to west. This photograph here has the solution for the game's first puzzle. One, three, five, eight, nine. Now we have the broken key card. Next we're going to go into the mess hall. And on this console in the back, there's a piece of adhesive tape. Lastly, we're going to go into the airlock, and we're going to combine the airlock key with the tape.
start by picking up this key card, the receptionist key over here, which will give us access to this door right here. Then we'll head north, directly to the right. And then head up to this next room. Next, we're going to take the protector key and head back in the direction of the save room. We'll head down and then to the left to open this door with the protector key. We'll open the drawer here pick up the pistol and the aperture card. That's an operation manual. It's a gun. Here we meet our first enemy. use the aperture card here and that gives us the manual for a wall safe. It'll tell us the default code. These first enemies are called Oilas. Which is Owl in German. Two, zero, four, five, one, two. The devs snuck an O four five one reference in there. Hehe <laughs> funny.
Now we got this classroom key. And from here, we will travel north. Repair patch there. Repair patches will heal light damage. Carsey forgot a key. Whoops. The first key is to the left. We gotta start by calling this elevator. So we get the service hatch key. We're going to take the service hatch key back to that door that I stood in front of a second ago and didn't really uh, interact with. Once we use the service hatch key, we're given our first puzzle. We'll start by pressing F, and that tells us what pins we need to move. Just gotta line them up so that the tumbles clear the keyway. This is the lockpicking lawyer and what I have for you today I highly recommend you read all of the lore in this game. I don't really include it in this video. I'd thought about it, but then I realized that it would make the video way too long. And I really want you guys to play this game for yourselves. put away everything except for the east wing key. So next we're going to exit the save room and then we're going to go not that way to the right. We'll head up. If we go directly to the back here, there's some more ammo. There's also a repair kit in here if you want it. We're just going to run right past this Oula. Oila. Down here. That oila is just not going to pay any attention to us, so we'll just grab the Mensa key from behind. And then we'll go down behind the counter. It's an island in the center of the room, don't worry. It's one of those island counters, those fancy island counters. And then... These enemies here are called stars. S-T-A-R. go down and into this room and then grab this west wing key
once we exit here, we gotta watch out because there's another star over here. Fortunately, she lined up in the center of the room so we could just run right around her and into the uh, restroom over here where we get the broken key. She's waiting for us outside, so we gotta be careful. And there's an Oila over here. We're going to head up, and then we're going to shove. You can shove enemies by walking up to them with a gun unequipped and just pressing the attack key. So left mouse button or right trigger if you're on Xbox. Then we'll use the west wing key to go up in here. Uh, first, we're going to grab the uh, 10 millimeter bullets here, and then we'll run right behind her. Single ourselves up and run right behind. Then we'll take this other broken key right here. There's another uh, stun prod over here. We gotta save those stun prods. They're real valuable. We'll go under this uh, star over here and then we're going to shoot her. If you wait for the crosshair to close down completely like that, you gotta wait for the square to just like size itself down. That's called a focus shot and it increases your chances of getting a crit and it also decreases your chances of the bullet missing. This frequency list over here is very important, but only two frequencies really matter, and that is tree and sword. So take note of those frequencies. They randomize in every playthrough. Now we're going to go in here and use the two broken keys. We're going to combine the two halves of the broken key into a complete key and go into our first flashback. take this radio module. You can turn the radio to the frequency 160 kilohertz. Hold it up to the microphone here. It will input. It will open. Now that we have the radio, there's a safe we can open. But also, there's a uh, there's a secret item here. In order to find the secret items in this game, the secret keys, you need to have an SSTV decoder. That's not something that you can just get in the game. We have to turn the uh, you have to turn the radio to 96 and then examine the cage. Just like keep mashing and trying different positions until you get it, and then you'll get the key of love. That's one of the keys for the secret ending in the game. Now we want to tune the radio to whatever frequency is tree, and then go into the menu and check the transcription on the receiver. And you can see the code I got is 35991, but it's going to be different for you. So then 35991, enter, turn the dial. Now we got the identification card. And we can proceed into the medical wing. So we get into this locker room here, just hold straight down and you'll move right past the Oila. And we're going 
gonna take the identification card and we're gonna go to floor one first. I wanted to go to floor one first because Issa is here. And we also get two shotgun shells. By the way, if you're wondering about SSTV stuff, I'll cover that in another video. It's confusing, I know. But don't worry, it's actually really, really cool. Like alternate reality game stuff. Next, we're going to put the key card back in and just press any button, four, five, or six. By the way, it should be noted that uh, some of the plot in this game is hidden behind like the foreign language that you see, so like Chinese and German, but I'm sure there's transcriptions of it out there on the internet somewhere. You have to really work to piece together the plot of this game, which is why I didn't really uh, get into it much. I'm just here to show you how to beat the game. start. Watch out for the star over here. Her patrol route has her go down and to the right. You can see there's a little bit of Metal Gear Solid DNA in this game. It's a little bit of Metal Gear, a little bit of Parasite Eve, a little bit of Resident Evil, a little bit of Silent Hill. This document here is necessary to decode the next safe puzzle. We're going to run a directly across and grab the pump room key right here and equip these stun batons. We'll unlock this door before the star gets us. One, three, six, three, one, three, six to solve this puzzle. Once we get out of this room, watch out. The star is probably there. So we're gonna zap her with the uh, stun baton. You equip it as an alternate weapon and then you uh, hit left bumper or L1 or mouse four or the C key on your keyboard. Yeah, you know, this is actually a Dino Crisis 2 mechanic now that I think about it. The alternate weapons here. Like, that is precisely a Dino Crisis 2 mechanic. But yeah, just keep mashing the button. Uh, the stun prod actually gives you iframes from the very first frame of that animation, so just use it, don't be afraid, just keep mashing. 
until Elster uses it. So I got the water key and the examination room key card. We're going to go ahead and use the water key. I should have also gotten the blank key card, which I didn't. This was a very, very uh, early attempt at routing this game, so didn't really uh, didn't really have any real optimized pathing. The Oilers have pretty good eyesight, so got to watch out for that. We also want to take the stun prod here. Now we're going to use sword. I will include on the screen in post the uh, the decode key for this. But basically what you do is you take these numbers and then you transcribe them into the uh, like into the the keys as they are shown in the file and the numbers I got here allowed me to open up the safe like so it's a little confusing I know this game has really confusing puzzles We're going to go into this room. We're going to equip the stun baton and we're going to use it immediately. Stomp that Oila out. And then we're going to exit and then we're going to wait until the music fades out. And then we're going to wait for 10 seconds because enemy positions do not reset unless you do this. You have to wait 10 seconds. And once that Oila resets, we can pick up the handgun bullets and these two boxes of shotgun shells here. In order to avoid this star over here, you can stay on the bottom left, but Because the star in this hallway is on the very bottom, we and when we took her out, I can just go up. So just like in Resident Evil 1 Remake, uh, enemies can come back kind of like uh, kind of like Crimson Heads, unless you burn the body. But they only come back to life if you walk over their if you walk over their quote unquote corpse after a timer has expired. We're going to combine this socket with the wrench over here so that we can use that to get another key later. Then we'll go over here and there is a box of shotgun shells. It might actually be a good idea to use a taser on the star over here because that star's patrol route can sometimes, uh, can sometimes be like in front of that door. Which is an unfortunate design flaw of this game, is that enemies have contact damage. We'll set the CO2 to the left 5, the gas to the right 5, and the O2 to the left 8. And that solves this puzzle. That document that I picked up a second ago 
with the uh oh oh i messed that up i, I was that was I was, O2 is supposed to be to the left 8, but I think I hit it 10 times. Um, but yeah, that document has attached to that thermite that we just picked up. Actually details how enemies who seem to be dead can quote-unquote come back to life. And that's what the thermite is for, is for getting rid of enemies that you don't want to resurrect. Otherwise, if you're like going in and out of a room... You can just tase them and stomp them. Especially if you know for a fact that you are never coming back to said room. Fortunately, that star was anywhere besides coming out of the door, so we were okay there for now. But that star is... Well, that star is just really, really obnoxious. We're going to move past her through one door or another. And yeah, because we uh, took out that other that other star at the very bottom of the screen, she's not going to get up unless we walk over her unless we walk over her body. The timer on that star hasn't expired yet, so we're just going to we're just going to go. I had to stop for a minute to check my inventory. I'm going to go ahead and drop the shotgun shells. The pistol ammo. And this thermite. We'll head up and to the left. We want to pick up this videotape right here. And some enemies are going to come out of these floor panels here. These enemies are called Ara. We'll pick up these two bullets before we head into this room. Ara will reset... Sorry, Ara will reset instantaneously whenever you leave a room and come back. They'll, they'll just immediately go back into the floor panels and their timers will reset. So you can just use that to your advantage to just like keep going into rooms, picking up items, and then leaving and returning. So now we're going to pick up the air key. And then we're going to get out of here before the arras come out of the floor vent again. Same as before. I think the trigger is for them to come out of the floor is just like if you walk on a certain tile or you walk through a certain point of the room. Now we're going to go over to this room on the bottom right, which I should have done from the get-go. And we'll pick up this blank key. Now we're gonna open this door and go up the ladder. There are five keys that are necessary in order to be able to exit this area. We can totally avoid the star in the middle, as you can tell by just going out and around through that other hallway. We're going to put in the blank key over here, and then from the top left... Well, first, Pass Carsey is going to do a Pass Carsey because this game's controls are a little temperamental. Anyway, define pattern, and from the top left, we're going to go right, down, right, up, down, down, right, up, and then print pattern... And then take the key. The blank card is now the earth key. I decided to get a little ballsy with this one. I probably could have just shot her to death with the handgun. It would have been okay. Maybe. Whenever I do the no-save version of this run, I'm definitely going to have a better route.
now that we have the gold key, that's the last key that we need. boxes of shotgun rounds here that we can get. We're going to rearrange our inventory. We'll take the pistol. As many pistol rounds as we can carry. Elster automatically reloads the handgun off screen if we don't have it equipped, but it's only two rounds. But we want the shotgun, the pistol, and we want two thermite. And we're also going to equip the thermite before the fight. This is the first boss fight. MNHR, Mina. So what we got to do is stay behind the column on the left over here. You can see the little lights on her gun sort of charging up from purple to green. And that's how you know when the shot's gonna come out. She does two shots, and then she'll uh, start moving around. Charge, shot. Charge, shot. And then after some amount of time, what she'll do is she will Oh man, I got lucky. I stood behind that uh, light over there, and that's the reason why that shot didn't get me. I almost passed car seated up. So when she does that, her visor will open, and then she is vulnerable. And all we gotta do is mag dump her. We gotta pick up all the ammo here before the fight is over. Also, the Aura here will die in one shotgun shell, but here's the thing, we have to use Thermite on them because Mina can revive them. Basically, every cycle that her visor opens, she will revive any dead enemies on the map. Don't even bother with focus shots, just just mag dump her as much as possible. It takes about 30 handgun bullets to take down Mina on survival. If the Ara comes out while Mina is standing like this, then just stand behind the column and wait for the Aras to come to you and then use the shotgun and then stomp them out, use the thermite so that Mina cannot revive them. Just keep running around. Sometimes Mina can be at an awkward angle where her visor will open and she'll be against a wall or something and you won't be able to shoot her. But yeah, that's the fight. Use the handgun, not the shotgun.
Next, we're going to go down here, collect some more thermite and this maintenance key. Then we're going to put away everything except for the shotgun. The maintenance key. Climb down this ladder on the outside of the building onto floor six. If we go down here, there's a couple of uh, 10 millimeter handgun bullets. Then we'll go in here. There's two oilas and I'm not sure whether this enemy is a star or a stork. STCR. We're not going to go into this room on the right. The room on the right requires a flashlight. That Oila always moves in a clockwise motion, so just uh, follow her path far away. for that star to go down there. There's another disposable stun rod. We want that. of handgun bullets here. There's nothing else in this room that we want. So we're just going to ignore the enemy here and leave. There's some shotgun shells right here. So what we'll do is we're going to shoot this oil over here. Stomp her. Pick up the 10mm ammo. Then leave and wait 10 seconds for the other oil that we just aggroed to return into position. she does that. Pick up the fuse. And then we'll slowly walk behind the oil over here. We have thermite on us. We're going to use that on this uh Stork with a star over here. Sometimes the shotgun can be a little temperamental at times. My recommendation is to use it on enemies that are completely unaware. Try to do it at like point blank range if you can. There's actually no reason to shoot this stork over here. We're gonna go over to the bottom. And then just uh, try to merc or get around her this way. And climb all the way back up to floor five. And we're going to take that fuse and we're going to use it in this room over here. The solution to this puzzle is switches two, four, six, and seven.
I chose to go downstairs to floor 7 because the enemies are easier to dodge on floor 7. Or easier to uh, stealthily navigate around on floor 7, I should say. Gotta use the thermite on this one because we're going to be coming back to the save room very often. So we don't want that enemy to come back. Then we'll take the, uh, the lift over here down to level 8. And then head to this door over here to the left. And pick up the shutter gate handle. Which is needed to open the uh, crank door next to the uh, enemy we just burned. There's another oila over here. Two more oilas over here. I decided to go ahead and stomp that one out. Just to get around there. The reason why I took that Oila out was because she is very close to that hummingbird door. I could have actually used the shotgun on both of these uh both of these stars over here. the top right a little bit because if we stay in that Oila's peripheral vision for too long then she'll come after us. Wait it for 10 seconds. Stay in the bottom right for a moment. Try to wait for them to group up like that and go. We want to go ahead and use thermite on these two here. Because they like to patrol this door. And as I mentioned earlier, with the contact damage, we need to take them out of the equation. Otherwise, they'll just hang around outside the door. And the second we regain control of Elster after the door animation is done, they will cause contact damage. That's like my only real complaint about this game is the contact damage. Now we're going to use the shutter gate handle over here. Now that we've come back to floor 7. And we'll take the owl key. Which gets us into the Oila dorm. Put away the stun prod. The pistol ammo and the revolver ammo. Also, be careful with the flashlight. Don't be shining it willy-nilly. Because if you do, then it'll aggro enemies a little too soon, like you saw just now. I wanted to shoot that enemy, or that Oila there, and uh, stomp her out. Because when we come back through this room, again, contact damage. We'll take the island key here. And there's a hunter's key there. We want the hunter's key so that we can get a gun from a locked box as part of an achievement. Head up to the right here. Through this door over here. And then into this door. Now that we have the island key, we're going to meet up with the uh, Colibris. So the Colibris are a neat enemy. What you do is, uh, whenever you see a radio signal or a radio frequency flash on the screen, you go into your menu and you change the radio frequency to match whatever frequency that was. And basically you're just 
hitting them with a feedback loop, which will kill them. What's uh, interesting to note is these guys actually have a uh, have a neat little bit of fourth wall. If you get too close to them, then you see an image of the Isle of the Dead, which is this picture right here. But uh, what they do is they uh, broadcast an SSTV signal. So if you have an SSTV decoder and you're standing right next to a Calibri, like get really, really close to it, like as close as you can without it causing any damage, then the SSTV decoder will show a picture of the Isle of the Damned. Like I said, I'll cover SSTV in this game in another uh, in another video. I have to come back into this room because, well, actually, I'll just go ahead and get rid of the handgun bullets here. And then we're gonna take the uh, the tape over here, the cassette tape over here. We need the stun prod for an enemy in the next room. You can walk walk clockwise. Sometimes we'll get around the Oila. But we want to do this room very quickly. What we'll do is we'll start by just uh, walking down into the right a little bit and mashing the uh, sub-weapon button so that we use the stun rod on the Oila over here. And then we have to exit as quickly as we can because there's an Ara that comes out of the uh, the floor panel over here. We'll take these shotgun shells, reload the shotgun. We're not going to grab those uh, magnum bullets over there yet because we want to take this uh, tape and combine it with the cassette. And then we will combine the gun case with the key and now we have a revolver. The room is reset. The ARA goes back into the hole. There's an auto injector here if you want it. There's no need to carry this repair patch here. We're going to exit and then we're going to head down and to the left. We just aggro this enemy over here. We want to use the workshop key. That we got from... Uh, I believe the Calibri room. Where we got the island key. And we want to change the... Uh, frequency on the radio to 142 after putting the, re the repaired tape in. Then we're going to go down to level 8. Past Carsey being past Carsey for just a moment. We'll head into this room over here. We're heading into... Falco's quarters. There's some handgun bullets over here, but our inventory is too jam-packed. And uh, yeah, that uh, that tape was in the Euler room. This is uh, this is a little capsule that's shaped like an owl. We're gonna go ahead and get rid of these pistol bullets. We don't need them because we need that stun rod. That stun rod is more important. Any item that downs an enemy in one hit is always going to take priority over pistol bullets. So you can bet your ass I'm going to take those. The Oilers seem to react to the music if you happen to be playing it on the radio. So we'll put away this revolver ammo and the revolver and the stun rod. And then we're gonna take four shotgun shells so that we can reload the shotgun. We want the hummingbird key. And the flashlight. I messed up and I aggroed the Oilo over there, so exit it, re-enter, break aggro for just a moment. Then we're going to head down to 
level 8. Going into this room, this room has four enemies. But here's the thing. Shotgun actually does pretty good work against the storks in here. Get these shotgun shells here so we can reload the shotgun again. We want these uh, the 12 millimeter ammo here too. Next we're going to turn on the radio and we are going to set the radio to the frequency of 65 kilohertz and then pick up the key of eternity right there. Yeah, the shotgun just makes really quick work of all those enemies in there. We'll head into the uh, hummingbird key room. So the Colibri's quarters. Then pick up the eagle key. We gotta come back for these items a little later. we come in here, there's another Colibri. So we saw 204 flash on the screen. We're going to go into the menu. The reason why we go into the menu is because if we try to chase the signal while the game is unpaused, then it'll take significantly longer to take down the Colibri using this method. You could also shoot the Colibri, but that's a waste of resources. Just go into the room and uh, try to keep the enemies de -aggroed. Any other enemies de that might be in here as well. But usually after three radio changes, that's enough. Another thing is shotgun shells here. And we can reload that. And we don't need those pistol bullets. They're just going to get in the way. Now we got the post box key. We'll have to get that disposable stun rod on the way out. We need the post box key. There was actually no reason for me to go that way because I took down those oilas, so the closer way to use the post box key would have been to go north and then out, but whatever. Pass car CB and pass car C, I guess. We needed to head to the ladder. Up to floor six, and then we are going to use the post box. Pick up the library key. Consequently, now that we got the library key, we're going to head down to the 8th floor, to this door over here, next to the uh, lift over here. There's a Colibri over here we can talk to.
So this puzzle, basically we just gotta make the uh, the crane game over here go all the way around and around, and then up, and then to the right, and up. And then we get this copy of the king in yellow, and we got this astrolabe. If you go down into the room below, then you can see the solution to the puzzle. We're gonna head back up here. There's that's the reason why I burnt those um why I burnt those storks there. And we'll use the astrolabe over here. For the top dial. Or for the smaller style, we'll go to bottom right. For the top dial, we're going to go bottom left. And then for the middle dial, we'll go top left. And then take the administrator's key which will allow us access into the mines. But before I went into the mines, I wanted to go back into the hummingbird room over here and pick up the stun rod. There's nothing in this room. Now this, this is very important. It tells us about the nanometer fiber. The monofiber wire.
Next, we're going to drop everything. Take the flare gun and these signal flare shells. Save all of them. We're going to drop everything except for our flashlight. There's four enemies in this room. We're going to hug the bottom and then go through this door. There's a lot of monofilament wire, monofilament wire in here. You can't see it unless you have a flashlight turned on, so keep that in mind. Once we exit this room, we're going to head all the way to the right over here and aggro this enemy over here and they'll crowd on the bottom. That gives us an opening to the left, which we can use to go to this door on the back. Turn off the flashlight when you get into this room. We'll press this button, it'll aggro every enemy. We're gonna walk over here and then wait for the uh, starlings to group up over here. Go over here, this way. And we have to lure all of them around. Be very careful. So, starlings and aras will actually uh, not crowd up on you. They'll just like kind of hang to the side. Unless they actually like come into attack. So use that to your advantage if you're trying to create space. Once we're in here, move around. There's a little nook over here. You can't read all the files here before the game fades out, so don't even try. Just like, don't even bother. 
they're all pages from the King in Yellow, which you can see it right about there. But we have to be a little bit further away while mashing the confirm button in order to zoom in and see it. It's just out of reach. Now we are in nowhere. Start by grabbing this handgun ammo, then we'll head into this room and be very, very quiet. There's oilers here. Pick up this one revolver bullet. I'm gonna be very, very quiet. Just go around the bottom to pick up this stun prod. And we can walk up towards the right. I want to pick up this doll that's sitting in this vat over here. Then we go down this hole. There's two more oilers over here. Got to be careful of that one on the top. She can crowd that door, so... We got to find a way to deal with her later, but for now we're just going to stealth around her. Put away the doll. We'll take the pistol and the pistol ammo. We're about to go into another boss fight. Just max out on pistol bullets here. There's a wedding ring right there. Nitro Express ammo here. Then we're gonna jump down this hole. The kanji here reads Nue. The name of this boss is called Nue. So with the pistol, there are periods of time where it can take a lot of hit stun and you can just like stun lock it for a little bit. But after a while, its uh, its stun threshold goes down, and then it'll gain like super armor, and then start chasing you. And as you can see, when the shot when the shots stop stunning it, that's when you need to run around for a little while. So maybe about like 10 seconds or so until its uh, hyper armor runs out. My lock on didn't happen there, so I'm gonna do it again. You can stagger your shots a little bit by focus shotting. Basically, we have to use all of our handgun bullets so that Issa will uh, pick up the gun and shoot. The less HP the boss has, the sooner Issa will shoot. Once we run out of ammo, we're just going to run around here until Issa ends the fight, like so.
Got some thermite flare over here, and then we're going to put everything away. We're not going to take anything here. Except for one thermite. Walking in between these guys is risky because you're likely to aggro them both. And, uh... That enemy is what I like to call a mega stork. And what a Mega Stork will do is it will charge the ever-living F out of you. So waiting for a little bit for them to return to their positions, equipping the Stun Prod. She moved up. She needs to move to the right. When she does that, we can walk up to this Oila, Zapper, Stomper, and then exit north to reset the room. And then pick up these signal flare shells. Then we're going to wait 10 seconds for the Stork to reset. Then use a Thermite on the Oila that we just took down so she doesn't come back because we're heading back into this room later. And that Oila is in a very risky position. we're going to come in here and we're going to equip the flashlight then we're going to run under this first column to the right and then go up and to the left and down and then to the right again and then up to the left grab this rusted key and then we're going to exit Needed to get out of the way of the stork, but uh, it messed up a bit. So now we're going to come into this room right here. We're going to drop everything, and then we're going to pick up a single stun prod, and we'll pick up the flare gun with one flare. This is the only flare shot that we're going to use on a standard enemy. Just because the room is exceptionally brutal. It doesn't seem exceptionally brutal, but it is. On this triangle door over here, the solution is 1, 2, 6, 7, 8. We'll move down here very slowly. Gotta watch out for that mina there. Keep the flashlight turned off and hold left until we reach a wall here to get the serpent ring turn the flashlight on pick up the serpent ring turn it back off because there's enemies in here then we'll exit watch the position of that mina right there we want her to be on the upper side of the room the mina then we're going to grab this small wooden doll and exit okay there's a colibri in here we're going to equip the stun prod we're going to equip the flare gun and we're going to turn to the first frequency We're going to zap this one and then hit this stork with a flare because 
Otherwise, that stork takes like a million bullets to kill from anything other than the flare gun. And this hallway is very obnoxious for getting around that stork. You're better off keeping storks uh, completely de-aggroed or just like slowly stealthing around them, but you cannot do any such thing in this room. Especially while you're trying to get rid of the Calibri. And we can pick up these shotgun shells, and there's another reason why I brought the flare with me here, was for the grenade shells here. We want to combine that with the flare. That's what these grenade shells are for. It's for the flare gun. And pick up the incense. By combining the, uh, the flare with the grenade rounds, we can uh, free up another inventory slot so that we can get the incense. Now we can exit out this way. That door in the top of this room is the area exit. And watch out for this oil over here. We'll head to the right. And the code to this door over here is 15689. We'll put away the flare gun, the shotgun rounds, and the doll, and also that incense. We want to put that away. We'll take the revolver with us. Use the wedding ring, or get the wedding ring, the regent's ring. There's only three rings. Gotta equip the flashlight. We're gonna focus shot on these two oilers here. Just to get them out of the way. Because we have to enter in this room and also exit through this room. There's room to maneuver around them, but I don't recommend it. On the index finger, we're going to place the regent's ring. On the ring finger, we're going to put the wedding ring. And on the pinky finger, we're going to put the serpent ring. And then we're going to take the plate of knowledge. the incense and the plate of knowledge. Put away everything except the flashlight. We'll take the stun prod, two stun prods. We'll take the rusted key. We'll take all the shotgun shells that we got. We'll take the shotgun. Equip the stun prod, equip the shotgun. And then we're gonna aggro these two oilers over here. lure them down here, and then we're going to zap them both and stomp them. This does mean that they will come back. We're not going to burn them, but that's okay. Take these grenade shells, take the wooden doll, and uh, our inventory is full, but don't worry. It's about to be not full very fast. The solution here is a K, so that's one, three, four, five, seven, nine. Then we'll equip the flashlight. There's there's monofilament wire here. And here's here's the here's the tough part of this room. I I pushed that aura back because for some reason it wasn't it wasn't locking on. But lucky for me, I, I was able to push the I was able to push it back. And stomp it. And uh, we gotta wait for this oila that we just aggroed over here. kind of get sort of close to them when you fire, but not too close. My recommendation is to just keep your distance and fire. But we want every enemy on our way to this plate over here to be dead. Another Ara just spawns behind us right there, so watch out for that. Another Ara is going to pop up in front of us right here. I was unable to ascertain the trigger that causes the aura to pop up. 
A lot of times they do it when you have your back turned, I think. There we go. This is a very, very tricky room. There's another Aura. That should pop out right there. Yep, yep. So the thing about Auras is they take a little while to actually like go down after you shoot them. So it's like you always have to kind of stagger them. So I ended up with more shotgun shells than I was supposed to. So I ended up having to get rid of these um, these magnum rounds. And then we'll take the uh, the plate over here and then exit the way we came. But once we took down that last aura, we have to rush the plate because another aura will spawn close to the plate. I just didn't want to uh, trigger its spawn or anything by mistake. I'm pretty sure it's all proximity spawns. So we want the incense and the three doll parts over here. I'm going to combine all of that. We want to climb this ladder over here. Head up north. Pick up this uh, small bottle of smelling salts over here. Once we do that, we can use those on Issa. And Isil will give us the rifle. One of the oilas here just woke up. Fortunately, it was the oila on the bottom left, so we don't have to worry about. We don't have to worry about her later. Although, really, if you route it correctly, I didn't do that correctly in this video. You shouldn't have to come back to that save room, that save room area ever. While Isa is waking up, we're gonna open this door. One, two, five, six, seven, nine. Gonna put away the rifle. There's two oilers in this room, so we gotta be uh, kind of stealthy. Oilers have very good eyesight, remember, so we don't want to take our chances going in front of them. If we don't have to. We're gonna wait for her to come back around because if we try to rush those uh if we try to rush those uh rifle rounds that that oil is standing near right now then we'll get crowded and we'll get hit during the dialogue box for pickup because remember the game does not pause during the dialogue box for pickup i messed up here somehow uh because i picked up those Why did I destroy the rifle bullets? I shouldn't have done that. I should have destroyed the pistol ammo. Once we get the plate, we put our, put down the mine and doll, and now we can just leave. I had to walk to see where that oil was. Now we can exit. Now what I was meant to do was I was meant to get all of the plates from the item box down there. But I didn't do that. I did a past Carsey. Don't worry, in the future we're not going to make any such routing mistake. Once we use the incense, we get the plate of love. I 
exit this way. Head up north. Nice and quiet. Go down to the right. So because I messed up and didn't grab those other plates in that other save room, we have to take another trip over to this save room. And of course, Oila wakes up. Caught me by surprise. I didn't want to take any contact damage, so I ran around the other way. And we'll put away everything except for all of the plates. And I mean all of the plates. put all these plates in and we're going to enjoy the ending.
yeah, this is a fantastic game. I highly recommend that everyone pick it up. It's available on Steam for 20 bucks. You can also play it for free on Game Pass, either on PC or Xbox. And also, uh, check it out. PlayStation 4, Switch Store. I was not paid to promote this. I actually really highly recommend this game. And uh, that's been Signalis, survival mode, no damage. If you like what you saw, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also be sure to check out my other no damage runs on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash carcinogensda. If you would like to watch these runs recorded live, you can do so on my Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash carcinogensda. And if you'd like to support my bad challenge run habit, you can do so on my Patreon at patreon.com slash carcinog... Wait, 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 what's going on? Hey! Pass Carsey, what are you doing? Dude, the game's over. Cut it out, man. Hello everyone. This is my no this is my no damage playthrough of Signalis on survival difficulty. So we're going to start the game by uh, checking this list over here. And that uh, tells us what we got to do. So we got to go into this uh, cryogenic hibernation unit. We're going to check it. We're going to go to the left over here and check the uh, reactor coolant system over here. we got to check the monitor over here. Anyone else feeling a sense of deja vu over here? Anywho, and next we gotta go into the cockpit over here. Check the monitor. All systems nominal. going to go talk to Alina Seo. Ariana Young.
You can read all the notes here if you like. Once again, excerpts from the King in Yellow. Wait, once again, what am I talking about? This is, this is a fresh playthrough. be going crazy. Anyway, we're going to go right from the save room. The chalkboard says we've been here before, but I'm not sure that we have. 204512, enter. How do we know the solution to this? I guess we'll take the classroom key and, uh, get ready to make a save. So I guess Pass Carsey eventually settled on uh, using the revolver here, huh? Seems solid. So we're gonna go up here till the oil or uh, oil uh, aggros, and then we'll head up left and then up right to get around the stork. This room has no enemies in it. This next room does. Two oilas. But they are oilers in uh, very difficult positions. Although really, I shouldn't have even bothered shooting the other. I should have just like unequipped the revolver and just pushed that one. So once we get into this room, this room is kind of a pain because sometimes you can bonk on the wall here and just like send yourself careening into that pillar and get hit by the stork. But uh, the idea is to uh, move clockwise twice. Uh, the reason why I had to move clockwise twice is because there's a delay before we can open the door. This is the final area of the game. It is called Rot Front. Start by grabbing the uh, 8mm ammo and the submachine gun here. 
Pick up the thermite flare. Got a lot of supplies here, so we have a lot of play. Pick up the two thermite stun rod. And my recommendation is to zap these guys here. And we're gonna use thermite on the first oiler that we zap and the stork that we zap here. I actually have no idea if those enemies are storks or stars. I have no idea. But it seems like we appear, like we see storks twice in the run. I don't know. Difficult to say. I had almost forgotten to grab the rifle here. We need to grab this rifle. I definitely could have used uh, more, more rifle bullets in places. Would have come in handy, I think. In the inevitable reroute of this game that I'm going to do, it's definitely going to come in handy. So here's what's uh, here's what's up. We're going to go down here and into this room here. We're going to navigate through the dark until we reach uh, this spot right here in the very center. It's going to be too dark to see. And then we'll flick on the flashlight for just a moment, grab the developing tank, and turn it off. We're not going to come back into this room ever again. And then as that enemy, as the shield enemy, walks up and to the left, we're going to go into this door over here. Then we're going to equip the rifle. And we're going to focus shot the stork and focus shot the oila. And then we're going to run up and we're going to stop them both. They're in a position where if we walk back into this room, we won't have to worry about them getting back up. Once we exit this room, we're going to head directly to the right because that enemy has very, very low uh, eyesight. And we're going to head up and to the left. And then down. back to the save room over here and then we're going to put away the revolver ammo, the rifle and uh, we're going to take as many stun prods as we can and put away the photo tank We use the hand wheel. We gotta wait for the wheel animation to finish because we try to move fast or any faster. Then we'll get burnt. That's damage. Then we'll pick up the blue diskette and the bullets in the trash right here. We also got some acetone in that blue room in there. There's some bullets over here. We're going to use the acetone to get this tarot card. Our goal is to pick up six tarot cards in this area. We use the diskette, the blue diskette we picked up. We use the antenna. We want to put this antenna over to antenna 43. Set the receiver dish over to antenna 43. And then we want to make sure that 43 is transmitting magpie.
I was meant to go to the save room, but I didn't. I guess I'm about to find out in a second. Had to do a quick check for the code. 560524 to enter in over here, and then we're going to shift the radio over to the frequency of 240 kilohertz so that we can look for the key of sacrifice here. space to carry death, huh? Well, I guess that means we're invincible. We're gonna head back the way we came, because we try to head out that front door, then we're going to be stuck in the middle of all those enemies on the right. That's what the developers would want you to do. But we're not going to do that. Gotta be smart. I'll we'll go into this item box here and we're going to get rid of everything. Except for the stun prods. Want to keep these stun prods. here and jump into this meat grinder after picking up the stun prod. We gotta equip the stun prods. Eight millimeter ammo here. Tower. Shotgun rounds. There's Calibri in here. Set the receiver to the first frequency. Zap these guys, stomp them out. Prioritize zapping over stomping. other stun prod. 10 millimeter ammo. We actually do want to keep the stun prod. Put away everything and then take the revolver with us. Leave uh, 12 revolver rounds.
we're going to put away 12 revolver rounds because we want to use those for the final boss. Another Calibri in here. Just stand your ground. Let's change frequencies. revolver and the stun prods because we want to use the stun prods on these right here start stomping only need about six of these total don't grab the thermite here like past Carsey did. It'll it'll jam up your inventory. Trust me. Don't do it. The code here is Aeon. We got the Moon Tarot. In this room, there's shotgun shells, and there is more 8mm ammo. We don't need the red discat, because we already solved the puzzle to get into the Ito, uh, the Ito bookstore. So, here's the thing. If you pick up a key item, like one of the tarot cards then the room that you were previously in that had the tarot card gets consumed with meat. Now, I had a feeling that heading to the right would cause this room to be consumed with meat, so I didn't want to do that, and instead I went to the right, grabbed these signal flares, or I went to the left, grabbed these signal flares, bleh, bleh, and we don't want to throw away those signal flares either, we, 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 we need those. I couldn't dispose of the thermite from this menu either, so... Turn on the radio and set it to up a couple more. The last two cards. item box here. We're going to put away the revolver, the flare shells. We actually don't need to take anything with us anymore. We just need the store key. Well, except for the photo tank. We definitely need that photo tank. Head to the right now. 
and then we'll head up into the right again and we're going to jump back down through the meat grinder Use the uh, store key over here. There's some more. Uh, there's some more uh, submachine gun rounds if you want them. But we want to combine the developer fluid with the uh, photo tank. And watch out over here for the stork. Be very careful. We can go into this, uh, this uh, packet locker over here, scan this QR code. And we got the final tarot card. Once we come in here, The meat has destroyed the ceiling, and now we have access to the uh, the dial there. If you want to go ahead and uh, do the final ending, watch the end of the video. This is just a quick dummy segment over here. Because the only way to get the secret ending is to go from this save point, but we're not doing the secret ending yet. I'll just uh, show it with uh, text commentary at the end. There was actually no reason for me to uh, grab any items in here. But for the final fight, you want uh, revolver bullets. You want the revolver, you want the revolver bullets. You want the flare gun, you want the explosive shells, and you want the uh, flare shells. And you want to load the flare shells into the flare gun. Head down, head to the right, pick up the dial ring, and like so. I actually don't know full moon, waxing moon, waning moon. I actually I actually don't know how to accurately describe all of these things. Just 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 do it like so. We'll check the king in yellow next to this MSX2. Once we have our loadout set up, we're going to set up our loadout again. So, revolver, flare gun, with flare rounds equipped. The flare shells, the grenade shells. Take the revolver bullets. And we have to leave an inventory spot free. As is mandated by the final boss. Right, so the commentary for this boss fight is going to go by really fast. Just start with the flare gun equipped, and uh, I'm just going to tell you some things right now. 
So the boss has six phases. Every phase, she's going to allow you to pick up a spear, which you can use to advance her into the next phase. Kind of like the uh, Walter Sullivan fight in Silent Hill 4. So with that in mind, uh, one or two flares will advance each phase. During the first phase, we're going to move around a little bit. Just uh, try to move clockwise because the spear is in her right hand. And so the hitbox will be close to the left of the screen or the counterclockwise of the screen. It'll make it a lot harder to dodge if we move counterclockwise. We want her to do her AoE attack. When you see little X's on the floor, that's when, we're, that's when she's about to make it rain spears. And that's when we take her down with a flare gun shot. We want to equip the rifle here, and we want to uh, try to move in a perpendicular motion to where she's going to throw that spear. And then we want to take down the Aras with uh, with our rifle, or sorry, revolver. Rifle. And then uh, we're going to take these, uh, these flare rounds here, which, by the way, they spawn if you have the flare gun. And then we're going to move uh, counterclockwise. Uh, when the spears glow red, that means that they are going to do a little AoE attack. So we got to make sure we grab the spear. I'm trying to wait a little bit so that I can grab the, uh, fl the signal flares. Because those do the most damage to her. And we don't want to waste those. And once we do that, we hit her again. And... Uh, if we did not pick up the signal flares, we won't have a chance to pick them up again. So now once we have advanced into this phase, she has uh, several new attacks. This is phase four. So she has, uh, well this phase actually went by really fast. She has uh, she has like a, like, a sh like a wave attack where she throws three gravity bombs like that, two, three. And those gravity bombs can also damage the Auras around. And basically between uh, between shots, we just like want to take down one Aura. And uh, sometimes she'll take down the Auras for us, but you know, just try to try to dodge if you can. Don't gotta worry about stomping any of them. Okay, and then we're going to uh, reload. Pick up signal shells, but be careful. Always wait for the end of an attack does that we're going to carefully focus shot so that we get the most accuracy it'll take one to two signal flare shots to get her to do her uh her spear rain attack one more time so we can hit her with a spear and this is the final phase this is phase six that's the last spear we're going to try to hit her with the last signal flares we got. And if we don't got any more, she won't actually kneel until after she's done her spear attack, by the way. So you can get her down to zero HP for that phase, but otherwise uh, she won't uh, go down. And that's the fight. That's it, it's done.
So the long and short of the plot is uh, Ariana was sent on a suicide mission by her nation's government. And our promise was to kill her as she is dying of radiation poisoning. She's powerfully bioresonant, so she called every Elster in the galaxy over to her. By imprinting her consciousness and Elster's consciousness onto pretty much every living being in the universe. And in this ending, pretty much every ending is interconnected, so all the endings are canon. They just sort of happen in a different, uh, different cycles of the game's story, so to speak. Because keep in mind, every time you die and every time you load a game, you're playing as a different Elster. I'll be showing off the Lily ending at the end of this video. We got all the keys to get that ending throughout the progress of the game. So stay tuned for that. But otherwise, this has been Signalis. Survival mode. No damage. And thank you all very much for watching. If you liked what you saw, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also check out my other No Damage runs on my YouTube channel. I have a lot of No Damage runs of a lot of survival horror games. And also a lot of non-survival horror games, if that's up your alley. Also a lot of challenge runs, you know. RPGs, stealth games, action games, and the like. That's kind of my bag. It's very rare that I play indie games on this channel, but uh, this has already catapulted itself its way into being my second favorite survival horror game of all time next to Resident Evil 1 Remake. So, huge props to Yuri and Babs. They have achieved the impossible. <laughs> There's only a two-person dev team out of Germany, and, uh, you know, they had a little bit of outside help for, like, the sound design and the, uh, music. But otherwise, you know, all the animation, all the coding and whatnot, they did it themselves. Yeah, anyway, other CTAs, uh, yeah, you can check out my Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash carcinogensda, that's where I record all of these. 
and if you would like to monetarily support my bad challenge run habit, you can do so on my Patreon at patreon.com slash carcinogensda. Working on setting up other forms of uh, support, if that is a thing that you would wish to do. But any hoosin. I plan to do a no save, no damage run of this at some point, just because I am completely enthralled by this game. And I believe that if you enjoy survival horror, you absolutely need to play this game. I don't like telling people, you know, you should do this with your money or you should do that with your money, but absolutely check this game out. Again, it's available on Game Pass. If you have Game Pass, you know, that service through Microsoft, you can play it, uh, you can play it without buying it on Game Pass. But otherwise, the game is only like 20 bucks. Or if you're if you live in you know another country or something like that, check the price on like you know your digital distribution platform, whether it's Steam or otherwise. I have heard that it's like the equivalent of US four dollars in like some South American countries. So yeah, please, please, I implore you, check this game out. Absolutely worth your money. I'll leave it here. Demonstrate the lily ending next. I'll just uh, overlay some text commentary over that just because I don't feel like, you know, doing any other commentary for the rest of this video here. But thank you. See you all next video. By the way, all of these stats are tracked across your entire profile. So in a segmented run, it means that I did die a lot. But total damage taken from all the segments is at zero. So there you go.